Airports around the country are in chaos. We realized they had figured out a way to smuggle liquid explosives on passenger airliners. This was an armed attack by an opposing enemy force. The short word for that is war. If this went wrong, you're talking about 2,000 lives in one night. It'd only been a year since we'd seen a devastating attack on the London transport system. There was a lot more terrorist activity than had been anticipated. Some of them would be people who were involved at the lower level. But then there were others where you could say, this is a serious threat. Ahmed Ali Khan on the 6th of August was under surveillance and he went into an internet cafe. A surveillance operative entered the internet cafe. What's he looking at? Flight times. Lima One's recovering the file. He cut and pasted and downloaded details of the seven transatlantic flights. It's at that stage that we begin to realise exactly what's at stake here, and this is very big. If it was seven airliners, you're talking about 2,000 lives. Well, as far as to say that this one was a significant operation, she might have been finding herself to do that. Umar Islam had conversations with Ahmed Ali Khan inside the bomb factory. Yeah, well, baby. All that. Well, obviously, she's got the baby, but that's all. And the conversation uh, from the probe, as I interpret it, looked as though they were talking about taking their wife and child on the flight. Maybe, I don't know, man, if she, maybe she'd take them with her. Maybe, you know what I mean? I know her brother needs to do that. And clearly that's a, a chilling thing to hear, that individuals are willing to take their children and their wife on a flight that they intend to destroy. Preparations were advancing at a pace. The hydrogen peroxide had been bought. Everything was actually in place. So, in theory, this could have happened within days. Why didn't we just arrest them? Remember, the timing of the arrest was clearly a matter that we've been thinking of for some time. But there's never a perfect time to make arrests. As more and more information got accumulated and the outlines of the plan got clearer, uh, I was in regular contact with John Reed. John told me the British police uh, operate under evidential constraints. It's not enough to get information. You have to have information you can act upon. From Michael Chertsov's point of view, and you know, through him, the president, because he would be briefing his president the way I was briefing my prime minister, Tony, um, then if this went wrong for them, the consequences after 9-11 would just be huge. So I knew how they would feel, but we had to ask them, please trust us. We knew that Ali would not go ahead without Rashid Ralph's instructions. Ralph was both the leader and the controller of this plot. They hadn't had to go ahead from Pakistan. We knew that that was the state they were at. 
So there was no immediate need to make arrests on grounds of public safety. We were at the beginning of the week and we decided to plan for the arrest on the Friday. There was such a strong connection between Ali and Ralph. If Ali got arrested first, then the likelihood is that Ralph would flee. If Ralph was apprehended first, then there was the threat that Ali could flee and also destroy evidence. So it was really important that we had control over both these events and that they were carefully synchronized. So I go to Pakistan, it's a natural thing. The Pakistanis are a good partner. Uh, they've assisted us on a regular basis. As we get into the room and I speak to my counterpart, Ashfaq Kayani, the head of ISI, we narrow it down from how are you and get acquainted to the terrorism threat, to threats to the West, to Rashid Ralph. We'd shared intelligence with the Americans throughout this operation. But nobody told us that anyone from America was going to Pakistan. And I was taken straight to the Home Office when they told me that Rashid Rauf, the Pakistani end of the connection, had been arrested by the Pakistan authorities. It is a fact that Rashid Rauf was arrested while I was visiting my Pakistani counterpart. And I know as a fact that the arrest of Rauf could be viewed as, how would you want to put it, an accelerant to actions that would have to be taken in Great Britain. It was quickly realized that this could compromise our operation. From a personal point of view, I believe that's a breaking of the trust that we had between America and ourselves. If Ali, Sawa, or any of the others got to hear that Ralph had been arrested in Pakistan, we don't know what their reaction would have been. They could flee, or they could equally detonate their bombs here in the UK before they get arrested. There was now a critical national emergency. Ahmed Ali Khan was sitting in an internet cafe waiting for a communication from Rashid Rauf from Pakistan. We had to move into what's called the executive action phase. In other words, we had to arrest all the people involved in this as soon as we could. The arrest phase was an adrenaline rush. Yes, it was, because it wasn't pre-planned the way we wanted it. If I could only arrest one person at night, that person was going to be solved. And if he had the explosives, he was in a position to make the attack happen. If I could take him out of the game, then maybe their operation won't work at all. Bridge food is turning left into Walthamstow Town Hall car park. Walthamstow Town Hall. Car park has two entrances, one on Chingford Road, another on Forest Road. Lion Roar is turning left into Chandler's Road. I think he's headed for the town hall. It seemed a significant point of the operation if the ringleader meets with the quartermaster. The coming together of Ahmed Ali Khan and Sawa was a major event. I walked down to the operations room and instructed that those individuals should be arrested straight away. Walk up, hands on. Walk up, hands on. It's quite a heart-stopping moment, to be honest, because the question is, is everybody safe? There's the risk of explosive material being readily to hand. When we arrived, the surveillance officers had actually stepped out from the shadows. He got out of the car very quickly, ran up towards Sarwal, grabbed hold of him, turned him over, and then told him exactly who we were and the reason for his arrest. We 
the two main players were when they're out of the game. It was a good start to the evening. Breaking news this morning, security services are saying a major terrorist plot to blow. Had this plot been carried out, the loss of life to innocent civilians would have been on an unprecedented scale. The recent arrests are a stark reminder that this nation is at war with Islamic fascists. When Rashid Ralph escaped, it was clear to me that this was not really kosher, that something really was amiss here, and that, uh, that he was permitted to escape. I think the story was something about uh, he was being moved between locations, and they stopped at a McDonald's, and then he had to go pray, and then, uh, did anybody see Rashid? Where'd Rashid go? <laughs> yeah, we were a bit, um, let me just say nonplussed. <laughs> Uh, by that, and, and very disappointed and very angry. A British terror suspect is reportedly killed in Pakistan. There are claims that Rashid Raouf has died in a US missile attack. It's generally believed that Rashid Raouf was killed suddenly and with precision, I think is the way the press accounts would describe it. And I must admit that's a good thing. I've heard rumors, as, as everybody, that he's dead. I don't know if that's the case or not. Government agents haven't actually seen the body. The local militants have cordoned off the area, so it might be quite difficult to ultimately get real confirmation of his death. Some say that the Pakistani and the American authorities want us to think he's dead. Because actually, he's being tortured in a cell somewhere. This individual, this evil individual, I was now at last dead, and I believe him to be very much uh, uh, deceased at this stage. No body's ever been found. He's deceased.